Hello and welcome to our very first Warhammer Age of Sigmar 4th edition battle report. Today we are pitting the forces from the Skaven Tide box against each other with the Skaven there cunningly deployed ready to uh, core semantics facing off against the Stormcast. So it's going to be a little bit of a different battle report today. It's going to be a more of a how to play 4th edition. Obviously the game is up for um, pre-order next Saturday and we wanted to show you kind of like the main mechanics of the game as well. If you haven't already, check out our uh, various videos and articles we've got over on spoosandbrews.com. We have got a full unboxing of the uh, Skaven Tide box, both in video and written form, and the same for the core rules as well, where we dig into how the game plays. But what we're gonna do is play through a game and go through that kind of the core new mechanics to show you what's new. So the mission that we're playing, is close to the chest and what's cool about the, the scenarios in, in this edition of Age of Sigmar is kind of a best of Age of Sigmar mm. where they've taken all the best missions from the last, what, nine years of the that game long, long. and uh, yeah, so on this one what you'll find really cool is they have suggested scenery layouts that show you kind of what goes where to make it balanced if we flip this over we can see what we're aiming for is um, basically the start of each turn the player who's not the active player picks an objective in their territory. So that's every turn. So on Dave's turn, I'll pick one. On my turn, he'll pick one. And that objective is worth more points, essentially. Now, Age of Sigma 4 has a new mechanic called the underdog, where basically the person who's losing gets a little bit of a perk that gets them back in the game. The underdog on a 5 plus can force their opponent to change which objective the primary is, which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah. You get one point if you control at least one, one point if you control at least two, Two points if you have more than your opponent, and two if you control the primary objective, and then four for your battle tactics. Now, battle tactics work the same way as they did, um, more or less the same way as they did in the previous edition of the game. So we've got six universal ones, and then each Grand Alliance has got two uh, bespoke ones, basically. Mm. So that kind of replaces ones in battle tomes, which I think is a good change. More balanced, more, isn't it? Yeah, more Easy of a level balance. playing field. Um, so we, we've Deployed ready, that works similarly to how it does in 3rd edition with the change that you build your army using detachments rather than you know, requiring battle line and filling in everything else. So we've got three detachments each. Um, it really doesn't matter for the purpose of this video which is which. The ones that we need to know about is the general's detachment. Mm -hmm. So my general over here has got a unit of liberators and he's also got a unit of prosecutors that are currently in the air ready to strike down off the battlefield later in the game. Dave, what have you got in yours? So my general is the Claw Lord on the Norbeast, uh, and in his detachment he's got these Rat Ogre buddies in front, and he also has a unit of Clan Rats. These Clan well. Rats here? There's Clan Rats there. Okay, so that matters because there's some battle tactics that require you to kill a, a unit from the enemy general's detachment. Yeah. So if you've got multiple units, it might be worth putting a token or a marker on yeah. so you distinguish. For ours, we've got different colour banners and stuff so you can easily distinguish which is which. Yeah. Now we have also got access to some um, kind of enhancements. Mm -hmm. Dave, what have you got? So for my uh, Claw Lord, I've given him the uh, manip skilled manipulator trait. It basically gives him a four plus ward save, but not kind of a traditional ward save. Basically, if, if I do make any ward saves, the damage bounces onto my rat ogres and said, well, not just my rat ogres, any non-hero Skaven infantry unit that he is uh, in combat range of. So yeah, that, that should come in quite handy to keep him alive. Nice. And they've got a battle formation as well, which is all about your ranged kind of weapon. That's right. So I've gone for the warp cog. Um, basically, when I get to fire my uh, blaster, I can roll on a sky chart and get a, uh, hopefully, a tasty bonus. Nice. Well, for me, I've gone for the Sentinels of the Bleak Citadels. I've got quite a few Ruination Chamber units on the board. Obviously, we've got the Reclusions, we've also got the Prosecutors in the air, plus the characters. So, basically, every turn, I can pick one of those units to get a 5 plus ward save, which is pretty handy. And again, nice. that's every turn, so it'll be Dave's turn as well. Um, my heroic trait is Staunch Defender. So, while I'm in friendly territory, nearby Stormcast uh, units, their control value increases by three, which we'll see as we play through the game. And then in addition, I've got the mirror shield on him, which means that Dave can only shoot him if he gets within nine inches, because I'm a bit concerned about all his ridiculous guns. I think he's looking a bit safe at the moment, but later on in the game, he might have a, a few ranged weapons coming his way. 
I actually forgot to mention my artifact, which is also my Claw Lord. It's a Warpstone Charm. So once he gets into combat, you can pick a unit that he's in combat with, and on a 3 plus, uh, you're minus one to your save till the end of that turn. Right, okay, well that could be uh, shenanigans, couldn't it? Could be, could be. So uh, you deployed first, Dave. I so did. you get the all important choice of who gets the first turn. Yeah, and uh, you know what? I'm going to give it to Matt. I'm going to let Matt take the first turn. The, the first turn of fourth edition, Matt. Special moment. So we'll see what happens in turn one. Okay, so going into my hero phase, the first thing I need to do is pick a battle tactic. Now, what I'm going to go for is take the flanks. This is a variation on an old one, but essentially, I need to try and get two units within six inches of the short board edges, which I think I can do here and try and get some points turn one. Um, if I did have any wounded units, I could rally, but that might be something we see later on in the turn. Now, as Dave's not the active player, he gets to pick one of his objectives to be the primary objective. And you've gone for this one over here, I, haven't you, Dave? I've gone for this one, because I think it's pretty safe this turn. So yeah, that's going to be hard for me to try and get this turn. So I think that's a good choice. Yeah. Now what we are going to do, though, is cast some prayers. Ooh. Now this is something that has changed massively since the previous edition of the game, where you kind of just... I don't know, you couldn't really interact with it, and it was a bit boring, wasn't it, prayer casting? It was, it was basically roll a dice. If you rolled it well enough, then you got the ability. Yeah, so now that's changed a bit, I generate kind of power points. I still have to pick a prayer to do, so I'm going to select Translocation, which allows him to teleport a unit somewhere on the battlefield, which might be handy for getting my uh, battle tactic. Absolutely. So, in order to do it, I roll the dice. If you get a one, bad stuff happens. Which it doesn't, I get a two. Now that isn't enough to get the prayer off. However, what I can do is save that in two, put it on my priest, and he's now got those charges. Next turn, when he casts again, he can opt to, um, you know, keep rolling, try and cast a spell, and he gets to add those points to it. Now, Dave, with the new command abilities, there are some things that you can do in my turn. We've both got four command points at the start of the battle round, and we've got them just for the battle round. You don't get them every turn anymore, which is a limited resource. You do have options such as casting spells in my turn. Is that something you'd like to do, Dave? Um, it will be, I think, later on in the game, but with where you're placed and where I'm placed right now, there isn't a spell I really want to cast, so I'm going to hold on to my precious command points for now. Now, this one else you can do at the end of the hero phase, isn't it? absolutely is. So, the Skaven trait is that I can pick, at the end of your enemy's hero phase, I can pick a non-monster unit and move them their full move, basically as a normal move. So, what I want to do is I want to move these rat ogres um, I'm going to move them up the battlefield a little bit. Okay, so the movement phase, we've seen some quite, I guess, aggressive pushes from the Stormcast. These guys in the middle have ran up, kind of getting ready to face off against Dave Skaven next turn. The the Night Quest Doors kind of just milling around, he might go for the characters in a bit. We've moved on to the objective here, and I've managed to get this unit here, and this unit here, onto the objectives. Now, unfortunately, because my... Um, Lord Veriton didn't manage to translocate himself. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of cowering behind a, a building just to get into a better position next turn. Um, he might be in some issues here. However, at the end of my turn, my prosecutors have come down from the celestial heavens. They get 3d6 for the charge. So I want to try a long ball charge and see if we can take that objective off Dave. Now, Dave, in your at the end of my movement phase, you could spend a command point to move a unit d6 inches. Yeah. Would that be something you want to do? I am going to do that. So I'm going to spend a CP. I'm going to try and move my grace here. Okay. Dodge a little bit. So we're all my d6. Let's he's going to be four inches. So he's just going to <laughs> pop on the other side. Three d6 is scary, but hopefully that little bit of extra movement will keep him alive. Over here, unfortunately that, that my target, the Grace here, scarpered away like the cowardly rat that he is. Um, your Claw Lord, however, Dave, is in range of my prosecutors. Mistakes were made, Matt. Mistakes were made. So we're going to try and hit them. Get three attacks, plus one for the champion. Champion's a new keyword that just means that you get extra attack on your weapons. We're looking for threes to hit. I've hit you twice. And we're wounding on threes. And that is one wound. Would you like to make a save at minus one, Dave? I will attempt. So he's got a four plus save normally. So we're on a five plus. He has failed it, Matt. So you take D3 damage, which is a mighty three damage. So I did, if he was close enough in combat range of those rat ogres, I could have potentially used his ward save and bounce them back. I did, I forgot that his prosecutor come down to turn one, so he's just gonna have to take those three wounds like a heroic rat he is. 
So Dave, you're going to use one of the new uh, command abilities here at the end of my shooting phase. I am, getting through the CP already. Um, it's called Covering Fire. I'm going to set my Warp Blaster and I'm going to shoot those reclusions. Obviously stipulation, you have to shoot the closest unit and you might as well to hit. They are my closest unit. This crazy thing, Matt, gets 3d6 plus 3 shots. That's an awful lot of shots. That's an awful lot of shots. For 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 13 shots. 13 shots. That's suitably scaven Dave. I'd see that as a sign of the horned rat. 13, indeed. Right. 13 shots. It would normally be hitting on 4s, but I'm going to be hitting on 5s because of the minus 1. But 6 is also wounds. 6 is also wounds. So we've got a few so auto wounds. So let's take those sixes out first. I'm fairly pleased with that result there, Matt. That's not bad. Like What's he wound on? So this wounds on a three plus. That's not so good. Um, two plus the two auto wounds means you've got four saves there, Matt. Four saves to make. And there are, that's minus one. Okay, so we've normally got a three plus save on these boys. It's going to be a four plus save after that. Uh, that's not great. Three of them have gone through. How much damage do they do? I think they're only one each. One each. Now, I did give them a five plus ward save at the start of the turn. Yep. So, five plus ward. Uh, they've taken a single wound oh, off. Oh, look at that. That's a good ward save for all that. So, yeah, but they're, they're, they're annoyed now. Okay, so after that uneventful return fire from Dave, uh, I think the prosecutors need to try a cheeky charge on that uh, Grace here. Now, I don't have to declare who I'm charging, but we've pre measured it. If I get a 13, which again is suitably fitting, uh, he makes the charge. Now, some might say, well, that's over my maximum charge distance. There's not actually a maximum charge distance anymore. You, you roll 2d6, so normally 13 would be out of range, but the prosecutors can actually roll 3d6 when doing their charges. So it doesn't matter if they don't reach it, because if I can snag that Claw Lord, I can probably get bodies onto that objective as well to try and uh, wrangle it from Dave and get the points. But ideally, if we get a 13 inch charge, I can deal with that wizard. So let's see how far we go. And that is six, seven, eight, nine inch charge. Unfortunately, not enough to get into the Grace here, but I should be able to get into combat with the Claw Master. So uh, I'm absolutely rattling through this CP and I want to show off another new ability which is counter charge so I can pick a unit and charge with them even though it's about to charge phase. So um, I foolishly moved these away forgetting these guys can fly down so they're going to charge back or at least hope to. It costs two CP so it's, it's an expensive, expensive one. How many yeah. CP have you got left after I that? I have zero CP left. Zero left CP, left okay. But I want to get, hopefully these guys can make the charge to try and keep my claw load alive because I'll be able to use his ward save then with him being close to him. Okay, so you have measured you need eight inches here I to need make this eight charge. Inches. Come on, Ryogas! Unfortunately, that is, that is short. So that is a failed charge and we'll move on to the combat phase. Okay, so the Stormcaster piled in. We've, we've measured this. Uh, unfortunately, my charge was a little bit short. If I'd have got another couple of inches, I'd have been able to pile these in in such a way that I'd be on this objective. One of the new concepts in the game is control factor. The Grace has got a control of two, so I needed all three of these prosecutors within three inches of this objective to take it. Unfortunately, that's not enough. I mean, we're going to see how they get on in the combat first, but obviously that was my main aim, trying to take this objective. It's not all kind of to ruin. At least I've put some pressure here and I've potentially done some damage to Dave's general here too. So we'll be fighting first with these. Um, they get three attacks each, Dave, Oof. plus one for the champion. Oof. And we'll be hitting on three. Now, do I want to spend a command point? to all out attack. I don't know if I do, Dave, because I think I want to do some reactive stuff in your turn. Um, that sounds so fair. I'm going to, yeah, if I hit with these, they'll be hitting on three. Um, so the all out attack wouldn't have done much really. I would have just got an extra attack. Five have gone through, which again is still enough to kill you. Mm. Now these are wounding on threes. And that is four wounds, Dave, at minus one. Okay, so that puts me on a five plus save. Ooh, that is a bit damaging. That, that's it, three failed there, Matt. So what damage is that? So these have got a special rule on the weapons. Damage plus one on the charge. That means they are two damage each. Two, four, six damage is that in total. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is enough to kill my claw lord because I can't pass any wounds off because he's too far away from my right ogres. Oh, no. So that is my general slain. 
So when they just settled, the uh, the has gone down. I think I've been really lucky there, being able to take out his character to turn one. Completely forgot about them being able to come down to turn one. They, been playing too much 40k. They're quite, they're quite nasty, yeah. Um, and if the Rat Ogres had been, if they hadn't have made that move, I'd have probably thought twice about it because they'd have been able to pile in and, and do some damage to me as well. Yeah. Um, now they might just turn around and punch me, then Dave's going to think, does he want to fight for his objective or push on to mine? Um, but that's a fairly successful turn. I get one point for having one objective, one point for having two objectives, and because I've got three objectives, and Dave's only got two, he still does have the one on the grey here because I haven't got more control than he has. That gives me a total of four points for objectives. I've also completed my battle tactic by getting units outside of my territory within six inches of the board edge as well. So that gives me an additional four points, giving me eight points at the end of turn one. So how are you feeling going into turn two then, going to your turn one, Dave? Time to strike some revenge, yes, yes! So to start on my first turn, my first turn of 4th edition, I'm very excited. First thing I'm going to do is pick a battle tactic. I have decided to go for Slay the Entourage. This is a cool new one. Um, you pick one of uh, a unit from your general's regiment or your opponent's uh, regiment. I'm going to pick these prosecutors. Yep, those punks there. These guys have got to die. Well, so. at the same time as well, I've picked an objective for the primary one which is going to be this one here, just because if you teleport any units, I think I'd rather them there in order to like charge them in my turn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of which, I do have a wizard, which is something you didn't have, Matt. You had your prayers, I've got good old spells. So my grace here, here is going to cast Skittle Eat, which returns. It needs a six, and what he's going to also do is going to munch down a Warpstone Spark, which this allows me to add a dice to my hand, so I get to roll 3d6 instead of 2. If I roll a 13, the spell automatically goes off, but I take d3 mortal wounds. Okay. If it's not a 13, I can remove the lowest number from my dice rolls, and then hopefully I've still got cool. Can you do that every turn? Uh, so this is only in my hero phase. Yeah. So we're going to roll. We need a 6. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's not a 13. We're okay. I remove one of those 3s. I've still managed to cast it on a six, seven, eight, nine. Now, unfortunately, I'm out of range to be able to stop that. We do have two places of power on the table where if I had a hero nearby them in the start of the hero phase, I could have gambled to um, basically have a chance of taking wounds, but allow my characters to unbind. But again, I'm too far away. So Dave, you get to remove your guy and place him anywhere outside of nine inches of so enemy models. is gonna go and I'm going to measure to make sure he's out of range, because uh, he's E, obviously, same rules yeah. apply, nine inches away from enemy units. So I'm going to measure him up properly now, but he's going to be somewhere around that objective. Cool. Now I'm also going to do something in your hero phase, Dave. Ooh. And I'm going to take a command point and spend that in order to cast a prayer in your turn. Ah, interesting. Now, I do get minus one to the chanting roll. Um, thing to bear in mind for the prayers, obviously on a 1 something goes bad, that's an unmodified 1. Okay. So a 1 I take damage, 2 nothing happens, anything higher than that, I get some prayer points. I want to do translocate, so I'm looking for 4 really, so a 3 or more with this minus 1 means I can teleport him. That is a 2, minus 1 is just a 1, so he just gets one more prayer point. He still hasn't been able to teleport himself But that's yet. cool because he's still at least got another prayer point for the, ready for your next turn. Yeah, and hopefully he should get that off and uh, teleport where I need him. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the end of my movement phase. Uh, the Rat Ogres quite clearly need to deal with these winged golden boys by falling back towards the Prosecutor saying outside of 3 inches, which is still a thing in Age of Sigma. As insurance, because I am playing Skaven, the Warp Fire Blaster and the Engineer have come over this way to uh, put some shots into those prosecutors just to make sure it's a job done. With this objective mine, the Clan Rats have started moving over with their eye on this objective over here. The Gisales have stood still to gain a plus one to hit for not moving because they've got their sights on these gents over here. One thing that we forget to mention in the hero phase, so yeah, I, in each hero phase I can put a ward save on a ruination chamber and I shift it to the prosecutors because they can be sense. some fire. Makes sense. The only other thing I've done, these brave rats, they undenard, but they've got their eye on these liberators and that objective. So they're going to hope for waiting numbers to be enough to deal uh, with those storm casts and get the objective. I think that makes sense. I, I did have a moment here where I thought well, I could spend a command point to maybe move the prosecutors away from the rat ogres, but 
I've only got two, and this is an interesting thing in this edition. You know how many command points you've got for the whole turn. You're not going to yeah. get any more on your no. your turn. So um, I want to save it because I could do potentially a 10 inch long ball charge and deal with this Gracie. That'd be a big win for the Stormcast if they can take him out. It would be, it would be. Um, so with that, we're going to move on to my shooting phase. It's time to let loose this thing. Okay, so actually, before we start shooting, at the beginning of my shooting phase, because I've gone the Warthog Convocation Battle Formation, I can pick up to three Sky Units. I'm going to pick the Blaster, I'm going to pick the Engineer, and these are Giselles over here. I roll on a charge for each one of them. On a one, kaboom, I suffer D3 Mortal Wounds. On a two to five, it's more power, I add one to Wound Rolls. And on a six, I get the add one to Wound Rolls and an extra piece of Rend. So I'm going to start with the Engineer himself. He gets... A one, he takes D3 mortal wounds. We'll do that, well, in fact, we'll do that now. So he has taken D3 three wounds. mortal wounds. Brilliant. Um, the Warp 5 Blaster has also taken mortal wounds. Has taken two mortal wounds. Going well so far, Matt. Yeah, this is this is prime Dave rolling here. Uh, and the Giselles. So they have actually got a buff, so they're plus one to wound or help shooting those liberators. That's handy. Now, at least there's nothing else that can hurt you in your own shooting phase, is there, Dave? Well, unfortunately, Matt, that is not the case because my, because my engineer is within combat range of my blaster, you don't get a choice. You have to roll six D6 plus three shots with the Warp 5 blaster. A lot of shots, you say, but any rolls of one does a single mortal wound to me. Um, so that obviously culminates as you roll more ones. So let's see how many shots I get first of all. So 60 for 66 plus 3. So we're hitting on fours first of all. I don't see a single one there. Oh no, one, one one. So I've done one more mortal wound to myself. And then we're looking for threes to win. Well, it's a pretty good device you've got there, Dave. So we've got two, four, six, eight at minus one, Matt. Eight, so that is eight, four plus save for the prosecutors. And they've done pretty well there. Three of them get through, uh, but I do have a five plus board save on them. So fives. Uh, no, we take three damage. So we allocate three damage to the unit. That kills one prosecutor and leaves one on one wound. Now, the way damage works now, you just allocate it to the unit. So you don't need to worry about allocating it to specific models as such, which I think is a much better. better way of doing it. Much, much better. I'm going to go with my engineer next. And in true game fashion, he's a bit injured. He doesn't care about that. He's going to go more and more warp energy and he's going to try and buff his musket. Now his musket is at two shots. I think it's three, 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 threes. Three, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus two rend, and then D3 damage. By overcharging it, it ups that damage to Which flat Which guarantee three. you to kill a Stormcast for each yeah. shot that goes through. Yeah. You do have to roll a d6 though. On a 2 plus, he gets the buff. On a 1, he takes d3 mortal wounds. Ho, 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 ho. He does get the buff. Buff, yes. No, that's very good. Now, if you get one a single wound through on those, you potentially killed the whole unit because I've got two wounds each. He's also got crits as well, um, auto wound. So we're going to roll to hit first. So he needs. He needs freeze to hit. And he misses with both shots. We're going to go with the Warlord Giselles next, and these guys are tasty. So they're going to take shots at these Liberators. Normally, they're fours and threes. Because they haven't moved, they get plus one to hit, so they're going to be hitting on threes. And because I got my Warp Cog off, they're plus one to wound. So they're hitting on threes, wounding on twos, at minus two Ren, flat two damage. And they need sixes to hit auto wound as well. Auto wound as well. So uh, they're two shots each, they don't have the champion keyword, so no extra attacks. Uh, so we're hitting on three, so we have unfortunately dropped 50% off That's them. That's unlucky. Um, no sixes either. Um, we're looking at twos to wounds. We do have three wounds at minus two Ren, Matt. Minus two Ren. So that is going to give me a five plus save on my Liberators. And these are two damage each. Five, two damage so each. So each one that goes through will kill a Liberator. So uh, yeah, five plus save. One of them saves, but that is two dead Liberators, Dave, which is a big chunk to my, uh, my unit. So one of these rat ogres has got a warp fire cannon. He's on fire at these prosecutors. <clears throat> he gets two d6 attacks. Three attacks. I'm mighty okay. three attacks. I'm doing well on the little rolling game today. Uh, we are hitting on twos. We're hitting on fours, wounded on twos. Oh, no, it's the other way around. No, isn't it? Um, but we are wounding on fours. So yeah, they, if you, you can get lucky and get a lot of hits off there, you can do quite a lot of damage. What's the rend on that, Dave? It's it's a massive rend two. Rend two. So that will give me a five plus save, which I pass with a six. 
Okay, so it is the start of my charge phase, and I'm going to declare a charge with the rat overs on the prosecutors. Really important these guys die to get my battle tactic. Uh, they're going to make it in on a nine. That's cool. So that those guys are going in. And then the only other charge I've got is those clan rats over there. They are going to take a charge at those liberators. It's worth a shot. You could take the objective here. Uh, with the four inches, you might be you might be short there. We'll check that in a second. Um, I reckon they're probably just short. Yeah. Uh, but you might be you might be close enough to be just tagging in combat. Now, something I do want to do is spend my last two command points here. It's a ten inch charge, but I think it's worth a punt to try and take out that um, the Grey Seer because he's going to be a bit of a problem for me if he keeps teleporting around the battlefield mm. and doing shenanigans. So we'll just roll this to see if I make a 10 inch charge to, uh, to get that rat. Nope, oh. three, failed it. So we'll check those charges, move on, and then we'll move back to the combat phase. So it's the beginning of the combat phase and so I've got two combats going on. The clan rats did just about make it into those liberators. Yeah, you've got to be within half an inch now to get into combat and they were just within four and a half inches so they were very lucky uh, rats. Say very lucky, I'm not choosing them to go first unfortunately. I'm going to be choosing these rat ogres because my battle tactic is to kill this unit prosecutors. Now that's not a very bad idea. In the previous edition of the game, ba uh, battle shock was a thing. Yeah. So you take heavy losses and then they probably lost a battle shock. Here, you might lose a lot of rats but you might just have enough left to take the objective and that's really what you've charged them Absolutely. to do. Now Matt, I've taken a lot of mortal wounds this game so you would think I'd be staying clear of any ability where I could take more. But that's not me. That's not the Skaven way. We are going to unleash Warp Fury on the Rat Ogres. So I take D3 Mortal Wounds. Of course I take three. Um, but what that means, and I'll place it obviously on the unit, what that means is they all get an extra attack each. A plus one to hit and all that attack would be really good here because these get on fours. Sadly, I ran out of CP a long time ago. Yeah, we found that in all our games, you burn through command points really, really quickly because Absolutely. there's lots of good abilities. So we're looking for fours first of all to hit. That they have any crits of sixes? Not a great roll. They don't have any abilities, mm. these guys. Uh, which is a shame because that's the most amount of sixes I've rolled. There's a lot the of game. sixes. Uh, and then we're looking at freeze to wound. You need to kill this unit really for your battle tactic as well, don't you? I do. That's a really good roll though. That's a very good roll. So we've got two, four, six, eight. We've got nine wounds. Just at the one rent though, Matt. Just the one rent. So that's going to give me a four plus save, Dave. So I might be lucky here. And you know what? I don't think I've done too badly. We've saved three. Uh, two damage each. Two damage each. Okay. So that's going to be 12 damage. I need, well, to save a lot of these in order to keep the unit alive. So we're looking for five pluses with my ward save. And that is enough damage to kill the unit. So you have managed to defeat the prosecutors, get your battle tactic, and get back the objective. So we may as well get some retribution on these rats. Uh, now, with Dave's doing quite a good thing here. With, with Battle Shock gone, in the past this would have been a, a, a kind of a, a poor move because I'd have killed enough to force a massive Battle Shock on him. As it is, I think on a good roll I can probably kill half the unit, but that still leaves enough bodies for Dave to take the objective off me. So really good move to capture this one. We're going to try and do as much damage as we can though to try and whittle them down. So we are hitting on threes here with the Liberators. Uh, we do have a Grand Hammer in there which does more damage. That's going to be represented by the Black Dice. We're hitting on threes. That is everything hit. And the Grand Hammer, both of them are sixes. Oof. So that is four mortal wounds off the start. That's four dead rats, Matt. And then if, my, if I can kill just enough to take it, I'll be happy. Then we're wounding on threes. That is less good. So that is four and minus one, Dave. Uh, I believe I've got a five plus save. Um, so I'll roll these sixes. I have not made a single one of them, so I'm going to lose eight rats in total. Which, again, that's not enough for, to con con to keep the objective on mind. You have claimed that objective, unfortunately. Nice. So I thought about my clan rats. I had 24 attacks with the rats that were left, uh, and actually, I managed to kill one and a half stone cast. Yeah, you, you I was really lucky at the roll. You've done three wounds there, so um, you, you've definitely got the, the objective back. Now, we'll roll it now. It, it's technically at the end of the turn, but I think there's nothing else much really to happen here. Clan rat units actually get D3 models back at the end of each turn, and Dave gets another two models back. Excellent. Which keeps... Um, the rat's fighting there. It does indeed. So that that's the end of my turn now. I don't think you've got anything else left to do, Matt. 
I have got myself one, two, three objectives, four objectives. We've got one, two, and more. Yep. And you've managed to get the primary. Yep. And you've managed to get your battle tactic for a full ten points. Oof. Which means at the end of turn one, uh, I'm at eight points, you're on ten. Excellent. Let's uh, get ready for the roll-off, Matt. So we're at the top of turn two, and it's... I'm so glad it stayed in the game. It is, of course, the priority roll to see who gets to choose who has the first turn. Let's go, Matt. I rolled a three. I rolled a four. Now, there's a bit of a twist in the priority now. If somebody chooses to take the double turn, they are not allowed to pick a battle tactic. And that's Which worth four points. Yeah, it's, a big, it's a big deal. So what I'm going to do is... I win them off. I am going to pick to take the turn because I need to get some points back here. That makes sense to me. Um, so yes, we did the roll off. Um, now I, I won the priority. One of the things that is new in the game is the underdog mechanic. Because I'm losing, that means that I actually get an extra command point which I've taken. And when Dave picked which the primary objective in, which is again this one by the Rat Ogres, I tried to roll to make him change it because if it was any of the other two, I could probably take it this turn. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he hasn't rolled a five, so I couldn't. Yeah, he needed, needed a five, yeah. I think he rolled a one, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Um, so, what we're going to do is um, I think I can do attack on two fronts, which means I take two objectives, I take two objectives, at least one of them has to be one that I did not control at the start of my turn. So, if I take back this one, or take back this one and get this one back or get back this one. There's lots of options here for getting back yeah. um, objectives. So I think that one's a nice easy one that I can do this turn. Um, in my hero phase, I'm going to spend one of my many command points that I've acquired to rally the unit of liberators over there. Ah. So this has changed a little bit now. Uh, previously, you roll a dice for each dead model, and on a six, I think it was, or five for some units, you got them all back. Now what you do is roll six dice, and for each four plus, you can heal a wound. If you roll enough four pluses to equal the wounds characteristic of the unit, you can bring a model back. So if I can roll four fours here, I can bring back the entire unit. It's a big, big buff to that uh, ability. So I do. I roll four fours, so I bring back two dead liberators meaning that I've got a full strength unit. And there's also some shenanigans I can do here. Add them to the front of the unit. That's very good. Edge them forwards a little bit. Towards these, uh, these clan rats here and my Gisales. Um I'm also going to try and do some prayer casting within my turn as well. He's still hiding behind that building. I'm still hiding in the minute, but he is going to try and translocate somewhere else again. He only needs one more point to get this off, and then he can get in a much more advantageous position. So let's see what he gets. He get, of course, he gets a one. He uh, he immediately loses D three power points, I believe. So he is down, and uh, yeah, he is not in good shape. He he's not having a great game. He's not having a great he's, game. He's, he's really not had a good game. Okay, so is that the end of your hero phase, Matt? That is the end of my hero phase. So I am going to try some magical intervention. So basically this allows me to cast a magic power as if it was my hero phase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cast Skitter Leap on my Grace here. Basically I want to try and get him out of dodge. Just push your command points to do that in my turn. Yep. It does cost a command point and I am minus one to cast this. Now the Grace here obviously has the ability where he can munch down on a warp stone. You only do that in his hero phase. So I'm, I'm rolling on a, on a pure 2d6 here, minus one to my cast. Yep. Can I get the six so he can teleport out of there? Four, five, six, seven, minus one is a six. It is a six, however, Ooh. however, my guy can unbind as if he was a wizard. Ooh. So can we stop that? by casting more than six. I have not. You've managed to get it off and he can teleport. He can, there. yeah, he's gonna, so I'm gonna pick him up and decide where he's gonna go. So quick update of the movement phase. We've moved the Liberators up onto the objective. The Lord Veritant's dropped back a little bit. I'm not too confident in his abilities, but at least it means <laughs> if Dave Skitter leaps something, there's something yeah. on there to contest it. The Night Quest has had to go back to reclaim that objective, but that's an objective taken from a battle tactic. In fact, I've done my battle tactic with those two units because I've taken one off you, which is four points, which is worth it. They've ran forward, 
Again, just gets another objective, and I think you'll be hesitant to charge them, so that puts them in a good position for next turn. Oh. Over here, the Lord has just gone on to try and deal with these Skaven, hopefully thin those down and take them out this turn. And finally, Dave... Where do these guys come from? The Stormcast for Command Points can reforge your units. So it comes back at half strength and deep strikes down nine inches away. So uh, it makes units of three really good because you get two of them back. Oh, dear. So unfortunately I have lost a rat ogre in the shooting phase. The prosecutors hurled their spears and managed to take a wound off that uh, one wound left rat ogre and inflict a wound on uh, yeah, on another onto the unit. Tanks, but they, because they do three damage, they're worth a punt, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I did toy again with using a CP to shoot with either my blaster or my Gisales, but because the rule state there has to be the closest visible unit and um, that you have to fire at. It mean both of these um, shooting units, these are the closest models, these reclusions. And, and again, we've got to mention it, we can use it yeah. next turn, but I put my ward save on them as well because yeah. I thought that it's kind of a waste of Dave's command points if he's going into them, which yeah. is quite hard to choose. Yeah. So this time I've decided to hold on to my CP for other sh shenanigans. But I think that's the end of your shooting phase, Matt, yeah. and I think we're going on to charges. Let's do some charges now. What we're going to do is a long ball charge with the prosecutors. Now, again, remember they go 3d6 inches, so I see where they end up. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is just enough to get them in. So they're swooping in there within half an inch. Ta -ta. And then my general is also going to do a charge as well and try and clear out some clan rats. And he has rolled six inches. Plenty. Yeah, is enough. So we'll come back after we've done the combat and let you know what's happened. So we've just played through the uh, the combat phase. The rat ogres managed to take out the prosecutors, but they were just an annoyance unit to keep pushing on some uh, threat and hoping to get there. The more important fight was over here, where the Stormcast and the Lord managed to take out the remaining Skaven, which means that at the end of the turn, I've got one objective, two objectives, more objectives, and I have done my battle tactic. Annoyingly, I still haven't had the primary though, so again, I only get another eight, putting me on a total score of 16. So on to Dave's turn two. Okay, so it's the start of my turn. Um, first of all, my battle tactic is going to be take that land. Simply, I need to take a piece of terrain, a terrain feature in Matt's um, deployment. With this lonely little Moore's Liam at the back, which yeah. is a prime target for, for it. Skitterleap. Um, aside from that, well, let's move straight on to that actually. So, we're going to try and cast Skitterleap with my Grace here. This is important for my battle tactic. Again, he's going to chop down a warp stone spark. He gets 6, 12, he's 17, well and truly yeah. done it. So he's not rolled a 13, which means I have to remove the lowest dice. So that means I've rolled a 12. Which means I can't stop it. I was going to try and unbind it with my thing, but double 6 means you can uh, do what you like with him. So I'm going to pick him up and move him in a moment. There is yep. something else I want to do in my hero phase though, and I've seen what Rally can do, and I want to try that on my Rat Ogres. Um, so I will roll 66. Four pluses, is that right, Matt? Four pluses, yeah. So I've rolled four four pluses, which means I can bring back my rats. Yeah, that's really handy. The good thing about that as well, if you rolled less, you could use those to heal up them. Yeah. So you've got quite a lot of options on, on how you spend that. That's a much better, um, Rally's much better in this edition than the previous edition. So we'll be back after the movement phase. So that's my movement phase. Just to summarise, these clan rats have got their eye on this objective. I've seen what the clan rats did over there. They fancy taking a, a Stormcast. Well, weight of numbers, they do all right, don't they? They've obviously got support from the Giselles, which again have stood still to gain that plus one to hit. They're going to be taking some shots over there. These guys, I'm probably just going to ignore. Um, my Warfire Blaster has moved further this way to get some, also some shots into those Liberators. Engineers there to boost them. And then finally, the Rat Ogres. They ran, they couldn't walk and get in range with their Warfire. Um, cannon. So they've ran up this way. It's a bit of a gamble because if Matt takes, if Matt wins priority and goes first, then he could um, obviously easily wipe them out. But if I can manage to maybe win priority, I could maybe forgo taking a battle tactic and try and get the jump on his general. So we'll see. But we do have a shooting phase coming up next. Right, well you might have noticed a big gap here where an Engineer and a Warp Blaster used to be. The Engineer foolishly tried to overcharge his pistol and killed himself. The Warfire Blaster, um, however, did get to shoot first. He got 20 shots into these guys, managed to kill one of them uh, and inflict a wound on the unit. However, he did roll a couple of ones and also blew himself up. 
And that was also because my warp cog ability, where I get like the extra rend or um, extra plus one to wound, I again wounded my warp fire blaster. Um, I did, however, get plus one to wound off on the Gisales, who did a very good job of taking out three um, Stormcast Eternals. Yeah, so. You're in a pretty good position there going into the uh, charge phase, Dave. Yeah, so we'll jump straight into that. Um, we're going to charge with the Clan Rats. That is not a very good charge. I, I don't think yeah. I've made that. Um, so I believe that the double is still a thing. Reroll charge? Uh, yeah, you can for a command point. So I'm going to spend that command point to reroll my charge. That's better. Is it enough? So unfortunately, even with a six on my reroll, I'm just out of the charge range uh, of those liberates. That's a real big shame because it leaves my tail end and my rats well within counter charge range of these guys. It and, does. Uh, it does leave this unit still alive. And as I've got two command points left, I am going to attempt a counter charge with them. Yeah. So, with an eight inches, they are easily in and Absolutely. charging into you. Okay, so we're, we've we've gone through the combat phase. Um, these guys obviously did counter charge. I actually managed to kill one with my old clan rats. Um, he then fought back and managed to kill two clan rats. Um, that was the only combat of the game. At this point, I want to see if I get any how many rats I get back. I just Welcome get the back. one. So that unit is now 19 strong. Now what is quite good here though, um, obviously you've taken this objective, you've still got the objective there, so you've got one, you've got two, and you've done your battle tactic for taking this one. Unfortunately yeah. you've not got more and you haven't taken the primary. No. I'm putting you on six points this turn, which means at the end of turn two, we're on 18 points apiece, Dave. Yeah, tasty, tasty, and it's time for the priority roll. Right, it is time for the priority roll for turn three. I have rolled a five. And I've rolled a one. Oh, now I've got the difficult decision. I can take the double turn, but I will forgo a battle tactic. Yes, yeah, so that's something new that they've added in third edition, which makes this decision really difficult, really, because you're going to score a maximum of six points this turn. Yeah. And that's assuming that you can get all the objective based ones. Yeah. Uh, with what battle tactics are left in mind and the position I'm in right now, I am actually going to forgo that battle tactic and I'm going to take the turn. You're going to take the turn. So I'm going to hear that flips back over. I've got a feeling you're going to push aggressively with these. So with that in mind, I'm going to pick this objective in the center as the primary, just because I think it's a bit more distant and harder for you to get. Because obviously I want to stop you from getting as many of those points. Absolutely, yeah. Because then if I can get my battle tactic, I could jump into the lead here. So that is the end of my turn. Uh, not a great turn, that one. I have lost all my clan rats here. This guy, the, the what's he called, the Terminus, the Stormcast Assassin, I'm gonna call him, with the big ax, he did an absolute load of damage. Yeah, so, so what's happened here, I Dave moved his units, he took the double turn to try and get as many points as possible. I saw an opportunity where I thought, if I can counter charge with the Lord Terminus, I can do quite a bit of damage. Um, Dave fought with the Raku Vatrigus first over here, which managed to kill the, um, the Liberators and did a couple of wounds on my general, which was really good. But that gave me a window to attack with the Lord Terminos. He is very good. He gets to fight, and then immediately after his fight, fought, a friendly unit of Reclusions can fight as well. And between the two of them, I think I did just enough damage to take out the entire unit. Yeah, absolutely. Which was lucky. If he had a couple left, that would have been not the end of the world, um, because obviously your rats come back. Battleshock isn't a thing anymore. You do still have that objective because my guys are too yeah. far away from it. You did rally with these, but then my Giselles managed to fit them back down to two. Yeah. Um, so I've got that one. I've got this one where my Gracie has jumped over to. You do have this one. And I've captured this one again. But of course, I gave up my battle tactic and I haven't got the primary, which is being babysat by that night quest all there. So not a great turn. We'll see what Matt can do in his turn. So I think it's safe to say that turn three was a bit of a bloodbath. Now I wanted to try and maximise objectives and just take out as much stuff as I could. I picked the battle tactic um, Reclaim the Realms, which is an order exclusive one, which means I have to have a unit in every quarter of the board. So what I did, I spread out the units, I brought a prosecutor back, obviously that's a heavily reforged unit of uh, prosecutors now, so it's just down to one model and basically just spread out single models to try and get quarters. Took a gamble on the, the Lord taking out the store, uh, the, um, the Rat Ogres, which he did quite well. And then the Lord Terminos went into the Gisales 
and took him out too. There was a reclusion there, but Dave managed to take it out with some shooting in his turn, which was a good idea. I only just did enough damage to take them out, but that puts me in a very strong position for the end of turn three, getting me a full 10, uh, no, it doesn't give me a full 10 points. It gives me eight points because I didn't quite get the objective in Dave's territory. So that puts me on 24 to Dave's 18. God, you've just got the Gracie left. That's all I've got left. So I think the scathing thing to do here would be to, for this Gracie to skit to leap out, out of the battle, giving me a defeat, but he'll be back to fight again, Matt. How did you find the first game day? So I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked the changes they've made. I thought I'd missed stuff like heroic actions and stuff, but you know what? I don't think I did. I think the game flowed a bit quicker without those... Um, Without heroic actions and those kind of things. I really like the new rally. I think that's probably one of my favourite new abilities. Yes. Well, not other abilities, but rewritten ability. So for me, I really like counter charge. I think that, that opened up some massive plays in here where you're able to charge on your opponent's turn. Likewise, casting spells on your opponent's turn. Your Gracie got a lot of victory points. You know what? Teleporting round. You know what, actually, yeah. I think that was my favourite. That and, and then rally. Being able to cast... I mean, obviously, I used it to reposition, but imagine some of the other stuff if you could do like you know attacking with some really cool spells or um i think you might even be able to cast an endless spell but that might be the wordings might be slightly different on that but yeah, yeah. you can cast any spell oh there you go so um so yeah i, I really enjoyed that i mean obviously this was a, a quick fight game with the, the models out of the box which by the way might have done a fantastic job of paying in such a short space of time and um, they look great uh, as Matt said at the beginning of the video, you can check out better images of these over on the website, along with all the written reviews and unboxing videos as well. So there's lots of Skaven tied content. And you know what, Matt? I think we've got more on the horizon we as have, well. We have, yeah. So, so the, full, the full review of the core rules and the Vermintide box is over on the website right now. There's also videos on YouTube if you can check that out. If you come back on Monday, we have a video in full review of the Fire and Jade uh, spearhead stuff which is really exciting mm. we'll probably aim to get another spearhead battle report on mm. next week maybe and then um next saturday hopefully we'll have a full match play game using 2000 point armies as well obviously these are just the armies out the box so a little bit limited with options i think adding another couple of hundred points to make them full fledged out armies i think will certainly for the skaven give you a few more options won't it absolutely they are they are ready to enter fourth edition um but for now that was a fantastic battle man thanks very much shame it was lost for the skaven as a victory for the stonecast we'll be back soon thanks for watching bye